Hi, this is Greg. Welcome to the channel. And on this channel, we talk about markets and investment with the sole objective of making you a better and smarter investor. Now, in this video, I'm going to talk about a subject that came on the radar screen fairly recently, and it's basically the EV SPAC markets, and more specifically, which EV SPACs do I think are going to zero? Now look, there's a lot of reasons to hate EV SPACs, and we're going to get into them, and on this video we're going to talk about a number of different EV SPACs that went public via the SPAC um, investment vehicle, and then I'm going to make some specific recommendations at the end of this video, so please stay tuned. So before we get into it though, please, if you get any value out of this, or if you like the video, please like and subscribe. I'd love to have you on board. Uh, for future videos and don't forget to hit the bell so that you get notified every time I come out with a video. Okay, so without further ado, let's get right into it. Okay, so before we get into the topic of the video, let's delve into what exactly is a SPAC. Okay, SPAC stands for Special Purpose Acquisition Corp. And basically, what that means is you raise a blind pool of equity. Now, this can be done privately or in the public markets. And it is basically a pool of equity uh, with is raised with nothing more than a business plan. And then those proceeds are to be invested pursuant to a business plan, either buying assets or in the case of an EV SPAC, developing products that relate to electric vehicles. Now I want to say at the outset, um, I believe that the entire SPAC movement that we've seen in the last couple of years, uh, in my mind, is an outgrowth of an extremely speculative market and it's emblematic of the bubble that the Federal Reserve has created along with the federal government by pumping too much money into the system. Uh, pursuant to the pandemic and creating inefficient um, asset allocation of capital because there's just too much capital around. So capital finds its way into these uh, financial innovations uh, called SPACs. And that's really why SPACs exist. Uh, they are really nothing more than extremely speculative vehicles in my view. And while they were popular for you know, a couple weeks, I'm exaggerating, but they were popular for a short period of time. Most of them have recently fallen on hard times as reality meets speculative fervor. Okay, now let's talk about why I hate EV SPACs, okay? There's a number of reasons and I'm going to get into that right now. First of all, there's the inherent difficulty in vehicle manufacturing and vehicle sales. Okay, witness all the trials and tribulations that Tesla has gone through, uh, who has a significant uh, first mover advantage against all these other companies. Uh, witness the difficulty they've had uh, where they only recently turned a profit and they, it's been proven to be uh, extremely difficult to consistently uh, maintain a profit even with the notoriety and the first mover advantage that Elon Musk has had with that company. The list of problems that well-established companies like GM, Ford, Chrysler, etc. have had in history uh, with the automotive business um, should make the point obvious that manufacturing and selling uh, cars profitably in a highly competitive market is extremely difficult. Reason number two, I touched on a little bit in reason number one, the market for cars and uh, electric vehicles is no exception. The market for cars is extremely intense with respect to competition. Tesla, for example, has a first mover advantage against any EV company. And as you've seen in many of the recent uh, news articles, every single major company, which is infinitely more uh, better financed than Tesla or any other startup, 
uh, is getting into the EV market. GM, Ford, Chrysler, BMW, Mercedes. I mean, it, it, you name any extremely large, well-established vehicle company and they are developing an EV line. This is very, very negative for an EV startup. The third thing is, I seriously question the, I'll call it organic demand for EV cars. Um, other than, you know, sort of like the status, virtue signaling types of people uh, that bought Teslas, for example, I don't see a lot of EV cars around. I mean, I see some hybrids. Um, you know, I, I see some interest in it, but generally, um, the market penetration of EV cars is still extremely low, uh, below 5%. And I just don't see people clamoring for new and untested uh, EV vehicles that they can just go out and be, you know, inconvenienced by um, and have one more problem in their life, i.e. Where the hell do I get this goddamn thing um, charged? You know what I mean? Fourth. There are severe environmental concerns related to EV vehicles, and nobody really talks about this, but it is a significant and real problem, and I believe that when EV vehicles are more adopted and more people start using them, these environmental concerns are going to come to the surface. First of all, you have to mine an incredible amount of lithium out of the earth so you'll be literally raping the Earth's surface uh, to mine lithium, uh, which is very, dir uh, very dirty and very um, uh, environmentally uh, disruptive uh, process. The second thing, what do you do with the batteries? I mean, have you ever tried to get rid of a battery? I still have a, a, an old battery from an electric uh, motor that I had attached to a boat like 10 years ago. I, I you know, it just sits in my yard. I, no, one, no one will take it because of the, the bad chemicals in it and the lead and you know all the toxic chemicals related to it. So we're going to have an enormous problem getting rid of all these enormous uh, old batteries. It's going to be like horrible. And then also like electric generation, okay? I mean like where do people think electricity comes from, okay? Think it comes from the sky? just comes out of thin air. It comes from directly from God. No, electricity comes primarily from coal, from gas, from oil, and from nuclear, okay? Renewables are less than 10% of energy that comes from the grid and it's going to be like that for a very long time because if I, I, I've explained on other videos based on my um, Wall Street background where I, I was involved in the energy business um, renewables do not have the reliability factor required to to be used as base load capacity so if everyone starts driving EV cars uh, you know the uh, demand for electricity is going to go sky high and you're going to have to figure out a way to generate all of that electricity. And I guess the last reason I hate EV SPACs is that to me it just represents a, yet another example of rampant speculation in the capital markets. Um, you know, a few years ago these companies never would have been able to go public this way as complete and utter startups. They would have had to start as private companies, uh, develop a track record, um, be able to prove their market concept that they could actually produce and sell cars profitably, and then they would go public. But in this market, uh, with rampant speculation and uh, the value of the stock and bond markets at 100-year highs, um, that is what made this possible, and it's yet another example of rampant speculation. Okay, so there's a big universe of these types of companies, you know, uh, saying it's a fad or saying it's, you know, some kind of a, the latest thing, I mean, is an understatement. So I had to limit it for the purposes of this video. So I only picked four companies to take a look at, 
and those companies are basically the following. First one, Nicola, symbol N-K-L-A. Second one was Fisker, symbol F-S-R. Next one was Canoe, symbol G-O-E-V. And the last one was Lordstown Motors, symbol R-I-D-E. Okay, so what I'd like to do now is let's go to my uh, trading account and I will share my screen with you. I want to take a look at these four and then we're going to narrow it down to, out of those four, the worst company and the company that has the most likely chance of going to the big football, i.e. Zero. Let's go to that right now. Okay, so here we are. Now, for the purposes of this video and, and not taking too much time here, um, I did some work uh, before uh, going live here. And um, so we're going to be able to go through the first two uh, pretty quickly and nar narrow it down in the interest of time, okay? So the first one here is uh, Nicola. Now... Uh, you can take a look here. This is what the stock has done. Just really briefly, let's move it up a little bit. Really briefly, you can see uh, it has not been um, uh, very enjoyable um, since it, it went public, and it was at 35. Now it's down to 15. Uh, so you know it's it's declined um, over time, as as I said before, uh, reality uh, hit the speculative excess. When reality hits the speculative excess, things tend to get a little bit more rational, okay? But um, Nicola was one of the first uh, SPACs to come to market. Um, they produce hydrogen trucks and battery powder powered. Yeah. Sorry about that. My uh, The brain and the mouth is not uh, working uh, Correctly. Anyway, um, they produce battery and uh, hydrogen vehicles. Uh, they've got some trucks going. They got a few products. Um, from what I've been able to see, they seem to be uh, the farthest along in terms of um, actually getting to commercialization, which is still a year or so off. So I uh, will mention, though, that they were one of three companies that. Uh, the SEC is looking into uh, for misrepresentation, uh, securities fraud, etc. But um, they seem to be the one that is in uh, the least amount of trouble, at least uh, so far. Um, let's go to the next one, which is Fisker. Okay. Okay, Fisker, uh, also you can see, let's just take a look at the historical quote. Take a look at the six month. You can, well, before we do that, you can see um, it's just, you know, up and down and up and down. The six month, you can see it's been a roller coaster ride largely down. Um, Fisker was started by uh, a gentleman named Fisker, who uh, is fairly well known in the automotive business. Um, uh, the company designs and manufactures electric vehicles, um, and right now they're working on a sports utility uh, vehicle, which um, has expected commercialization within the next year or so. Um, since they are not being investigated by the SEC and the Justice Department, uh, I'm also going to take them off my list. I mean, I, I, I would certainly not go long this stock, okay? But um, as far as shorting it or betting that it's going to go to zero, you know, it probably isn't the most attractive one in the group, okay? Let's go to, uh, before we do that, let's discuss Canoe and Lordstown. Um, let's take a look at something here. 
Okay, so in this article, it talks about how both uh, Canoe and Lordstown uh, are being uh, looked at by the SEC and the Justice Department. Uh, they both opened uh, investigations uh, into both companies, and here it mentions also uh, investigations into hydrogen trucking startup Nicola. Um, so, so there's some issues there too. But um, the uh, the the uh, thing that I liked in the negative sense about Canoe and Lordstown is that both of their management teams have been replaced as a result of these accusations of material misrepresentation and securities fraud uh, with uh, respect to uh, their public offerings. And that is a very, I can tell you from working on Wall Street, that is a very, very, very negative thing to have happen to your company. And uh, Frequently, it's almost impossible to come back from something like that. So right away, I would put Canoe and Lordstown Motors uh, on my list of the two to look at uh, for being um, the worst among a really bad sector. Okay, so let's, let's take a look at Canoe. G-O-E-V. Okay, now you'll notice even among the bad charts, this one looks partic particularly bad. But let's go to the historical quote. You know, and it just, I mean, it was trading as high as 18, now it's down around 9. 9 and change. Um, obviously, I, I would have much rather shorted it up here. But I think that uh, the prospects for this company uh, are probably pretty dim, and uh, I would definitely consider uh, either putting a short on this or for less experienced investors, um, you'd probably want to look at buying some slightly out-of-the-money puts, and I prefer the long-dated out-of-the-money puts. Okay, so let's go back. Let's just take a look at the last one, Lordstown. And here's Lordstown, symbol ride. You can see equally ugly chart. And let's look at the historical quote. Yeah, I mean, this thing... It was trading as high as 30. Now it's down. It's down below 10, around 9. Um, just a miserable chart, miserable experience since it went public. And I think of all the stocks that we've looked at in this uh, <laughs> rather miserable sector, I think if I'm going to short one of them, if I had to pick one of them. I would pick Lordstown Motors. If I had to pick two of them, I'd go with Canoe and Lordstown Motors. Uh, either one of them would probably be okay. Um, Lordstown sounds like it has the most significant legal problems and potentially um, problems with um, the Justice Department. And uh, both the CFO and the CEO, I believe, uh, both had to leave their post were forced out. Uh, that's a very bad um, precedent. It's very bad uh, for a company and very difficult to recover from. You know, and that's leaving aside all of the uh, tremendous difficulties that uh, car companies have in making cars profitably and selling them. And then you put on top of that the question of the level of demand and how much the market can actually absorb of these electric cars and I think you have a serious problem on your hands. So I am just going to look at quickly what the options look like on this. And I'm doing this all in real time guys. 
Um, I want to go out as far as I possibly can. So I want to go to January 23. So the January 23 puts, um, so let's do, I don't like the open interest on that one. It's a little bit too thin. All right. So I want to look at these, which is, so on this one with a strike price of five, you would want the stock would have to get to five. If it was at if the stock got to five, it would be at the money. If the stock got below five, it would be in the money. So if you think um, this company is going to zero, this might be something that you would look at because you could buy a decent amount of them. They're only two dollars a contract, or the ask is two oh six. But that would be just one example of something that I would look at. Okay, so let's go back to um, to the main screen, and uh, I'll give you some further thoughts on the matter. Okay, so that's a, a rather simple analysis of the sector. Again, I hate the sector. I do not like SPACs in general. I think they are just speculative uh, vehicles that are not based on anything other than a business plan and they are emblematic of the rampant speculation in today's market with valuation of the stock and bond market at 100-year highs. And I think that uh, there are many, many better places to put your money. However, if you want to make a bet against something going down, and if you want to uh, either short the stock or if you want to buy puts on the downside, and uh, again, with the puts, I personally would recommend more long-dated uh, puts. Even though you pay a little bit more for them, you have more time to be right because these things can, especially in a speculative market like this, these things can go up and down and up and down, and it might take a while for uh, your business plan or your expectation on these things to actually play out. Okay, so I hope you enjoyed the video, and please do me a favor. Please, if you got value out of it, like and subscribe and don't forget to hit the bell because I'd love to have you on board for future presentations and remember we on this channel talk about markets and we talk about investments and we try to give you as much content as possible to make you a better and smarter investor.